In a matter of hours, the woman you are seeing right now will try to take her own life. Her name is Dorothea Bins, and she is one of the cruelest women of the Third Reich. For years, she has dedicated herself to terrorizing the prisoners of Ravensbrück, a concentration camp for women. Her reign of terror ended when she was captured by the Allies and put to trial. This is the record of the moment when the authorities read Bins her sentence. As consequence of her atrocious crimes, she is sentenced to die by hanging. Despite her vacant expression and stoic gaze, this is too much for her. As she leaves the room, she returns to her cell and decides what her next step will be. She finds a sharp object and wields it against her wrists, cutting the flesh until the blood begins to flow profusely. Today, in this new episode of Military History, we will tell you everything about the life, crimes, and end of Dorothea Bins, the cruelest guard of Ravensbrück. Dorothea Theodora Bins was born on March 16, 1920, in the town of Grobdon, Germany. She was the second daughter of a middle-class couple, although little is known about her childhood and adolescence. It is known that her father was an assistant forest technician, and her mother owned a nursery and several acres of farmland. There is no record of any traumatic events or attitudes in her youth that foreshadowed her becoming a monster. Dorothea grew up in a turbulent Germany, where resentment over the defeat in World War I and political instability prevailed. Violence escalated to the point that Adolf Hitler came to power in 1933, just before our protagonist turned 13. It is possible to assume that, like many other Germans, she was seduced by the speeches of hatred, extreme nationalism, racism, and anti-Semitism promoted by National Socialism. For this reason, in 1939, she presented herself to an SS office, the elite organization of Nazism, to offer herself as a volunteer worker. This is how she found employment at Ravensbrück, a new concentration camp that was exclusively for women. Let's see the testimony of Zaheva Jilo, a survivor of this place. <laughs> אנחנו נכנסנו לצריף ענק עם אסירות פולניות. כל הזמן צעקו עלינו וקיללו אותנו שאנחנו יהודים ושאנחנו אשמים בכל. Between October and November 1939, Bins was responsible for guarding the wood sawmill, where 10 prisoners worked. Months later, in 1940, she was assigned to supervise the inmates who collected garbage, cleaned the floors, and cooked. In this initial stage, Dorothea did not brutalize her subordinates or commit any crimes. However, her more psychopathic traits would come to light as she climbed the ranks at Ravensbrück. In the summer of 1940, Bins was promoted to the position of block leader. Her good work ethic and blind obedience had caught the attention of the camp's leaders, who decided to reward her. Notably, Dorothea's new boss became Maria Mandel, one of the wildest guards at the camp, famous for her brutality toward the inmates. Bins became her favorite pupil, and it was at this moment that she developed a taste for blood and a passion for death. It is impossible to know whether our protagonist was simply indoctrinated into cruelty or if, deep down, she had always been a monster waiting for the opportunity to show herself as she truly was. Either way, Dorothea assisted Mandel in torturing and administering savage beatings to the prisoners. It is suspected that this was when she killed for the first time, although we do not know how many were her victims during this period. In February 1944, Bins was promoted once again. This time, she was given the important position of Abarov Sharon, meaning Chief Overseer of Ravensbrück. After five years as a simple prison guard, she finally had enough power to unleash the blood orgy she had longed for. One of the first measures she took was to increase the number of daily roll calls. These were the procedures in which the inmates were forced to leave their barracks and line up in the central courtyard, while an officer took attendance to ensure that no one had escaped. With Dorothea in charge, roll calls were held two or even three times a day. The survivors of the camp remember that when Dorothea was present at roll call, silence took over the scene. Amadnu shalosh pamim bayom bimifkat. She lakach hamon zman. 
מסביב עמדו חיילות גרמניות עם כלבים. גם היה קר, כי לא היה לנו כלום מה ללבוש. כשהנעליים היו קטנות, אז אמא הייתה חותכת כדי שאצבע יכולה לצאת. The prisoners would fall silent in unison, fearful of what this perverse woman might do to them. They couldn't speak, look at their fellow inmates, or even sit down. They had to remain standing until the roll call was over, which could take between two and five hours. The procedure was not suspended for cold or heat, so there were prisoners who fainted before being called. As if that weren't enough, before leaving the barracks, they did not have breakfast, but received only a little water. When they had all reported, they had to carry out their forced tasks, usually working in factories for the Nazi war industry. At noon, Dorothea ordered that each prisoner be given a crust of bread. Poor nutrition and lack of hygiene were the main causes of epidemics of typhus, tuberculosis, pneumonia, or dysentery, which claimed the lives of thousands of people. Bins used to patrol the concentration camp as you see her in this image. She was dressed in her neat uniform, whip in hand, and accompanied by German shepherds trained to attack at her signal. The overseer was looking for excuses to subject the prisoners to hell. The slightest complaint, mistake, or insolent glance from any prisoner was enough for Dorothea to administer a beating, order their execution, or send them to the gas chambers. Let's hear the testimony of Dagmar Hachkova, a Czech survivor of Ravensbruck, which perfectly illustrates her evil nature. On one of her walks, Dorothea saw a woman she thought wasn't working hard enough. She approached her and slapped her so hard that she fell to the ground, then took an axe and began to beat the prisoner with it until her lifeless body was nothing more than a bloody mass. When she finished, she wiped her blood-stained boots with a piece of the corpse's skirt. Then she got on her bike and pedaled back to her quarters as if nothing had happened. Sometimes, the task of killing the victims was assigned to her German shepherd. This is what another survivor, Olga Galavigna, remembers. I remember the guard Dorothea Bins walking through the camp, I can still see her before my eyes. An exhausted prisoner passed by her, stumbled, and fell. She made a great effort to get up but she was exhausted and had trouble maintaining her balance. Such a scene was enough for Dorothea. She pedaled harder with her bicycle, picked up speed and ran over the miserable inmate. Then she called her dogs and set them on her. Those animals were wild, ferocious, trained specifically to tear the victim apart until she stopped breathing. One of the most infamous sights in Ravensbruck was the bunker you are seeing at the moment. Convicted prisoners accused of sabotaging production line and attempting to escape the camp were sent there. The punishment consisted of taking away their clothing and food, leaving them to fend for themselves in the cold. Every so often, a guard would spray them with frozen high-pressure water, followed by a beating. Of course, whippings were part of their daily ordeal, in sets of 25, 50, and even 75. Next, we will hear the chilling testimony of Martha Wokert, a German peasant who was detained for having sexual relations with a Polish man, which was a crime according to Nazi racial laws. Dorothea Bins read me the arrest warrant and my punishment, two sets of 25 lashes. Then a guard ordered me to get on the rack, and they secured my feet in a wooden clamp. They lifted my dress above my head to expose my backside. Underneath, I had nothing on, as we had to take off our underwear before leaving the barracks. Then they wrapped my head in a blanket, presumably to muffle the screams. While they tied me, I took a deep breath so they couldn't tie me too tightly. But they noticed, so they tightened the strap until I felt horrible pain. Then they began to whip me, they ordered me to count each lash out loud, but I only got to eleven. It felt as if my flesh was made of leather. When they finally finished and let me go, I felt terribly dizzy. Among the prisoners, female guards were reputed to be even crueler than the men. This can be seen in the following clip from the film Life is Beautiful. Andiamo ragazze, su svelte, su belle, di qua. Los. Questa è una nuova. Ha imparato subito. Quella di sopra poi che ci ha fatto uscire. Quando è arrivata sembrava buona. È la peggio di tutti. Nothing seemed capable of moving Dorothea, 
and she quickly gained a reputation as the cruelest guard in Ravensbrück. However, it is surprising to find that a monster like her was also capable of feeling love. Indeed, Vince formed a relationship with Edmund Browning, a member of the SS and assistant to Rudolf Haas, the commander of the Auschwitz concentration camp. Some remember Browning as a particularly violent individual, whose sadistic tendencies were equal to or greater than those of his beloved. In fact, it is said that he encouraged her to commit her crimes, and they would often stroll through the camp, watching the prisoners being brutally punished and then walking away laughing. The relationship did not prosper because Browning was transferred to Buchenwald. We do not know what happened to him afterwards, as he was reported as missing at the end of World War II. There is a particularly strange episode in Binza's life that shows an unknown facet of that monster. On Christmas in 1944, she allowed the adult women of Ravensbrück to organize a party for the imprisoned girls. A decorated stage was set up for the occasion and a puppet show was prepared. To lift the spirits of the young girls, they were allowed to eat things they hadn't tasted in years, like sausages and jam. In the midst of the celebration, a choir made up of girls sang O Tannenbaum, one of the most well-known German carols. Tannenbaum, O Tannenbaum, wie grün sind deine Blätter, du grünst nicht nur zur... Shortly after they started singing, the young girls interrupted their song and burst into tears. That was too much for Dorothea, who was in the front row watching the show. Upon seeing the tears of the girls, she stood up, pale, and left the room. It is impossible to know the true meaning of her act, but it is possible that, at that precise moment, she felt something akin to guilt. In any case, the truth is that Binza's reign was about to come to an end. By early 1945, it was clear that the Third Reich's days were numbered. The Red Army of the Soviet Union was advancing into German territory, liberating concentration camps along the way. Ravensbrück had its turn on April 27, 1945, when communist troops entered and removed the Nazi yoke from the prisoners. However, by that time, Dorothea had already fled on her own. She was aware that if she were captured, justice would finally be served, so she abandoned her uniform, assumed a false identity, and escaped. None of this helped, as a week later, she was identified in Hamburg by the British Army. Both Bins and other SS officers were sent to a prison in the city of Recklinghausen. Dorothea and other guards from Ravensbrück were tried for their crimes between December 5, 1946, and February 3, 1947. During this process, the authorities called different witnesses and survivors from the camp, who recounted in great detail the horrors they had experienced there. At one point during the trial, while Dorothea was on the witness stand, a lawyer asked her if she thought the inmates were satisfied with the harsh treatment they received. Binz's chilling response was, I think they prefer that to being deprived of their food or something else. She never admitted to killing anyone, although she confessed to slapping and beating the most insolent prisoners with a ruler. On the other hand, she said that her outbursts of violence, if they ever existed, could be attributed to her interest in maintaining order and discipline. Finally, the accused from Ravensbrück were found guilty of war crimes, including mistreatment, torture, and the murder of prisoners from Allied countries. As we told you at the beginning of this video, they were sentenced to hang. Hours after her sentence was read, Binz attempted suicide by cutting her wrists with a sharp object. However, the guards who were watching her realized that something was wrong and opened the door while she was still alive. She was immediately treated by a doctor who saved her life, thwarting her last attempt to escape justice. The execution was scheduled for May 2, 1947, at the Hamelin prison. That morning, Dorothea was taken to the gallows, where British executioner Albert Pierrepoint was waiting for her. He placed a black hood over her face and tightened the noose around her neck. Then, the trapdoor on which she was standing opened, her body fell heavily, and the rope broke her neck. Dorothea Binz's life had come to its gruesome conclusion. Although nothing could repair the damage done to the victims, 
the execution was seen as an act of justice that brought some light amid so much darkness. We've reached the end of the video, and we want to ask you, do you know of any Nazi guard as cruel as Dorothea Bins? Leave your answer in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that have left their mark on history.